This is it. We're rolling. Episode 478, No Laugh Track Podcast. Justin Severson here. Pete Lee over here. Pete Lee over there. <laughs> Justin over here. Pete Lee over there. Hi, Pete. Hey, uh, it, it's Stephen Lee. I don't know. Like, if we were like a morning show uh, duo, we'd be Stephen Lee. <laughs> Leverson. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, uh, you were telling me an interesting thing before the podcast that you write down everybody's name on the top of the notebooks and you showed it to me and everybody is just in normal letters. And then mm-hmm. for me, you do cursive. Yes, I have I have these notebooks going back, you know, for the for years and years since I've been doing this podcast. Yes, every week I just I start I write the name I write the number of the episode and then I write the person's name in you know normal like block letters or not block letters but upper lowercase just regular printing. Yeah. But for you, Pete Lee, for at least the last two times, and in fact, I should go back because I like I said I have all these notebooks. I'll go back even farther. I write Pete Lee in, in cursive. cursive. That might I mean. I think it it's something to do with how you feel about me, you know? Like <laughs> <Fancy pants. laughs> But at least you're not writing like like Mr. Justin Peter Lee <laughs> <laughs> multiple times on one page. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about that, I write about your beautiful skin. Yeah, it, it, it look good on me. Doodles of two <laughs> intertwined rings. <laughs> you know, no, I, I don't know, maybe. But the funny thing is that your, your, your cursive writing of my name is actually very close to my signature. I still have the same signature from when I was in third grade. Like it hasn't changed because I'm like I want to write it legibly in cursive, and I'm not very good right, at right, cursive. Right. And so yours looks exactly like my like you could forge documents for me probably. Well, on a future episode, maybe I'll admit to the documents I have been forging in your name. All right, perfect. But it's too soon right now. Yeah, all right. The, uh, all statue right. limitations not up yet, but at some point. Yeah, that's very strange. You know what? It, it's very uh, traditional handwriting, like uh, um, cursive. I y- think it really is. Yeah. And to by the way, legible, as you said, do you guys have a weird podcast ever? I feel like every podcast I listen listen to, they're like, and by the way, are you worried about your credit score? Go to Credit Dash. You know, like there's a, yeah. every podcast listener apparently is a, is worried about their credit um, and like somebody stealing their identity. So you actually could steal my identity and we could loop that into a great promo <laughs> right now for whatever the credit companies are that protect your I love that. I love that identity. You just gave brought me back to uh, I remember, you know, your your physical social security card. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember getting mine. I think I had to get it to. I don't know. I needed it to play sports or something. I don't. Not sure why. I didn't have it like it was very young. But then, I have memory of getting it. I have a memory of receiving my physical social security yeah. card. And at the bottom of it, it said uh, sign signature signature mm-hmm. here. And I was at the age where I didn't know cursive yet. Mm-hmm. So I wrote in my <laughs> <laughs> really crappy like ten year old, nine year old Justin's. <laughs> Printing, and then years later, when uh, I really noticed that it said signature, I was obsessed with how I fucked this thing up. Is that the dumbest thing ever? You had one shot. I you had blood. one shot at it, and <laughs> nobody told you at that tender little age that yeah, your chicken scratch was gonna. <laughs> you were gonna have to show up for job interviews, and they're like, "Wow, his resume is great, but uh, whew, who's this guy? Holy cow! That, he's a serial killer. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Oh, wow, oh, that's funny." <laughs> That is great. Yeah, anyway, so, uh, well, you showed up this week. Uh, are you still living in California, Pete? I live in California. I actually was in New York City last night, and cool. if I if I look a little crusty for the podcast, I uh, I was telling Lewis, I, uh, I, I had a sh- my last set, I got off stage at the Comedy Cellar today, I guess, at 1.45 a.m. Oh, jeez. Um, so I was at the Fat Black, and I went on right before Dave Chappelle, and then I went over to the uh, to the comedy cellar, and then I had to wait because Chappelle was going to come over there and do a set. So then I had to go on after Dave Chappelle because he's doing Saturday Night Live. And then whenever Dave is around, there's 30 people. Like he he came in last night and was like, he's like, I was like, hey Dave. He's like, hey Pete. And then 30 people come in. There's there's a it's like a like a boat on Lake Minnetonka, and you see the boat, and then after it, it's the wake. Yeah. He has a wake of of people. Entourage. He has a whole entourage behind him. And so uh, we were all, and, and Dave's people are fun. And so we were all drinking. And then I, you know, I lifted back to my hotel, took a nap basically, 
and then got on a flight with uh, my dog uh, who's laying here. Um, we got on a flight and we, um, yeah, we, we flew here. I took a two hour nap and then now thanks to the, the loop coffee upstairs, I'm, I'm existing. Holy moly. Well, thank you for being here. Oh, how man. many times, uh, I'm not gonna ask you how many drinks you had last night, but I'm, let's just say there were two. Every time you got one, did you go, I shouldn't be doing this? Oh did, yeah. Did you tell someone I shouldn't be doing this? Yeah, I, which feels even better. That like those are great nights. Oh, I shouldn't be having this drink tonight. <laughs> right. Tomorrow's gonna be terrible. Yeah. And to be honest, today's great. Like I, I you know, um, I, I think I'm running on like five total hours of sleep, but I've gotten good sleep all week. I'm gonna be fine. Um, also, it's not like I have like a real job where I got to go into a business meeting and have critical thinking. That's like, right. Watch yourself. You'll upset a lot of people. Right. Yeah. So. Well, I, I, well, I know I'm trying to respect their jobs. Right. Like, like no, you, have, you have a real job. Like I just, I get to just be an idiot with you on this podcast for a couple hours and then I'm going to have dinner with Lewis and then I get to go horse around on the stage and then I'm going to go take my dog for a walk and that's going to be the, that's that's the day that I have to have on five hours of sleep. Yeah. I'm fine. That you sounds know? all right. That sounds um, a bit all right. Uh, uh, so I saw the picture of your dog. I think you posted the two of you on social media in the last 24 hours. I saw it. Yeah. And I, and I my first reaction was, is that is this real? Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, my dog, Diesel, um, he's, he's laying down on the ground. At some point, he'll probably be on my lap for the podcast. Uh, so he is a he's a fully trained service animal. He has like a Department of Transportation, you know, certification, all that kind of stuff. Um, he so he was my girlfriend's dog, um, and I cleared this on the last podcast. He's a rescue. Don't get mad if you're out there going. He's a French bulldog. He's a purebred dog. He oh, he's so pure. Uh, he, he, whoever originally paid for him, he was so expensive, um, but he, he was a rescue. She rescued him. And then, uh, now, you know, he's our service animal and, um, but he's my service animal. He's not like, he's her dog, but we, he's my service animal. And so whenever I fly places, like she's me, she's flying into Minneapolis tonight, but I had to go to New York for a couple of days first. So like he had to go to New York with me. And so he's walking around New York doing all sorts of, you know, New York stuff. He had a whole adventure and then, you know, flew to Minnesota and he's like, all right, this is Minnesota. And I took a picture of him with a pine tree. He looked very woodsy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's he's having all sorts of crazy. I think he, he just had his 35th flight. Um, he's been yeah, he's been going everywhere. I'll tell you a story. So um I haven't been on a flight in like two years, but that's. Oh fine. my god! <laughs> I'm kidding. And Diesel's yeah, Diesel's uh, and he doesn't even have to wear a mask, or he ne you know he never did. But um, what a jerk! What a jerk! Yeah, um, <laughs> there was a while there where, because uh, he, I don't know what he was in his former life, but he's like he's like the head of security. Like he he's muscular and he walks around and he'll kind of look at people like no, I don't trust that. You know, uh, like Brandon walked a little too fast through the showroom and he was like, that's suspicious. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, my guard was up as well. To be yeah. Honest. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, but now now you're in his tribe, you're in his wolf pack. You're all good. But um, he uh, so part of his training was kind of training that that security dog out of him. And in these circumstances, just letting him be chill with everything, not going like, Oh, I need to sound the alarm. Cause somebody looks weird. Yeah. There's so many people that look weird in airports, but, um, it's one of the things that, cause when, when I first started flying with him, I was just worried that he was going to be a dog sometimes. And one thing that I've learned from talking to flight attendants and people at the airports, service dogs, are still dogs and they have moments where they're dogs. And, um, I, we were, we flew from LAX to Charlotte Douglas. I was in route to Richmond, Virginia. And he was like, I, he had the skin infection. So I had him on an antibiotic and then, uh, he, I, I also switched his dog food back to his old food. Um, cause he just wasn't going to the bathroom and I'm like, Oh, all right, he needs his old food. But, Antibiotic plus switching food means like upset stomach, probably. Sure. Then we go on this flight. It's a warm flight, but he's like shivering. 
and I didn't realize that he had like the poop shivers. You know what? You know when you're like, I gotta go so bad, and like I can't go right here. And so he like kept it together. He like you know he's like trained. He's he's like trained to just muscle it out. We get to Charlotte Douglas, and we're walking through the airport, and um, and he's he like, knows you're telling the poop story. He just yeah, oh yeah, D, I'm telling the poop story, <laughs> and uh, and we get to Charlotte Douglas, and he's um. Uh, and he's like starting to pull over, like like I need to get out of this sea of people. I need to go over to this space where there's not a lot of people, and like this little alcove, and uh, he, and he's like, I'm pulling over. I'm like, Diesel, you can't go to the bathroom. I'm like I'm like the pet service area is right there. I can see the little green sign, and he's like, No, the bathroom is right here. And we had just pulled over around this little, like little pole, and then I realized in front of us was the most populated place in any southern airport, the line for Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and so, like, and they're facing us, the line, the line for Chick-fil-A, because the Chick-fil-A is, like, right here. The line is here. So everybody in Chick-fil-A, they, they were like, oh, what a cute little dog. Of course. And then he does this thing where he, like, like arches his he starts going like this and i'm like what is about to happen and then he projectile shits and it looked like a horse kicked over a can of pumpkin <laughs> it was it like just kicked a can of pumpkin real hard it was like Whoa! and it, it must have shot six seven feet no it didn't hit anyone wow. um and I wow. like I knew that he was he was done and so I, I went and I took my backpack and I, I set it at the edge of the the poop um, sure like, like a traffic cone like a traffic cone and it was it was sticking up so like don't you know if you're in a hurry you're trying to cut around somebody don't go here and then I'm like what what do I do like what what do I do and I realize I have all of his uh, I have these like green poop bags that I um, the doggy do good sure, ones yeah. so I got as many of those as I and I'm like squeegeeing it and I, I know I uh, long story short <laughs> clean it up but uh, as soon as he projectile pooped the whole line for Chick-fil-A goes oh right and like we know what a crowd of like 50 people sounds like it was like they became they were like individuals and they became a crowd at that moment <laughs> and then uh, Diesel he's like fully trained and a good boy he comes and he, he walks around to my side and he sits down and he just like looks at it like I don't know who did that, but like, <laughs> that's a bad dog. Like I'm a service dog. He like went back to being a service dog after having one little moment where he was a dog. And then, um, He's like, I'm still on the clock. <laughs> yeah. And the whole time that I was cleaning it up, he was just sitting there like a good boy. He wasn't, uh, walking around. There was no danger of him walking anywhere. And, um, and then after I got it all cleaned up and I, I was taking my, uh, my wipes in like cleaning the floor. Cause I just didn't want any, I, it was sure. And this yeah. lady walks up and she goes, oh, my God, what a precious little dog. I'm like, you should have been here five minutes ago because it was terrible. <laughs> right. Like it was absolutely uh, a horrendous scene. But so, yeah, he's a, a fully trained service dog. But he just has moments where he's still a dog. And like, um, you know, that that's one of the only moments I can think of where. He, uh, but like he couldn't help it. He was like sick and the plane was turbulent so like like the plane like shook him up right. <laughs> and he was just like i can't you had a perfect opportunity to turn that into like some crowd work when he uh shit in front of everybody oh my did god you have some uh, did you have just some start comments? just start roasting yeah i actually so i wasn't wearing my hat and uh and i like cleaned it up and then afterwards i felt i actually felt embarrassed by the whole thing um now i think it's hilarious but like uh, I like put on my hat. Like I, I like I, I remember going to the pet relief area and then he wound up going again. That's how bad he had to go is like like that's the stuff he shot out was just the stuff that like he still had more um, that he could have gone. Been there. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've all we've all had that yeah, yeah. that um, morning after. Oh, yeah. And um, but yeah, when I went to the pet relief area. Uh, area i put on a hat and i'm like all right it's done i have my hat on i'm in disguise now like nobody's like like people are gonna see this guy that was wearing a black hoodie and gray pants with a french bulldog with a service vest and then oh he's wearing a hat that must be a different guy what a coincidence yeah the guy looks just like him except he has a hat so totally different guy <laughs> yeah to totally different guy yeah oh but God. diesel's a good boy and he uh yeah he's he's been He's been amazing in so many circumstances. So, uh, I, you were before we started, you were describing about how the 
dog came into your girlfriend's life. I, you don't need to uh, re, re, redo that story. Oh, but yeah. I am curious, like, what if instead of ending up with a dog, it would have been like a horse? Would you be taking a little horse around on an airplane? A Shetland as, pony? Yes. A service pony? Yes, or like a pot-bellied pig or something. What if that oh, would have been the animal she ended up with? Maybe. I don't know. Well, um, yeah, I... Oh, God, it could have been way worse. It could have been like a tortoise that lives 90 years. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> like something, something insane. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab Diesel and bring him up on my lap. Come on, oh, yeah. He, um, he'll sit. Uh, so oh, my God. <laughs> Frenchies, they have a... They have like uh, so there's something with their spine where they can like sit up like this pretty comfortably, and uh, yeah, he's got his little foot up on the table. Um, but we a lot of times on airplanes, he's more comfortable sitting like this in my lap than he actually is sitting across my legs, and so we just sit like this. And th but the like the first of all walking into any place with him is like walking in with elvis i was like, gonna say you're celebrity everybody yeah, walks celebrity in fans. and Absolutely. goes oh my god yeah. and there are times where i'm listening to a podcast and i have my ear pods in and i just see people go and i'm just like i just keep walking i'm, I'm like which to me feels so rude because i love people and i love talking to people right, but right. You know, I'm not going to just not listen to podcasts when I'm walking in through an airport, you know, because I'm with him. But um, when we're on the plane, he sits like this. And, yeah, that's like every everybody comes and stops by and says hello to Diesel when he's sitting like this. But I'm not trying to get attention. I'm just trying to sit where he's the most comfortable. But, yeah, he'll probably fall asleep while we're doing this. He's not tall enough to drink out of the toilet in an airplane, correct? No, no. He. By the way, he won't. He will not touch the floor in an airplane bathroom. Oh, um, he! I've tried to get him to go in there, and Do you he put little shoes on him. <laughs> he no, he like he. There's something about those floors. There's been so much waste that has not been cleaned up on those floors. He like, knows. Yeah, his nose can smell it. That he, I can't. Right. He walks up to that <laughs> thing and he's like, no. And so, um, uh, maybe I can show you. I, I'll put this down. Hopefully, you can still hear. But. Um, and D, I'll put you back up. But so when I pee in the airport bathroom, I put him way up like this, and then I just do like this. No. So I'm I'm in the airport bathroom holding him up, and uh, yeah, right right now he's like, "Are you peeing?" Right. He, he's like, "We're we're in pee, we're in pee protocol pee, mode." Pee position. But he's pee uh, pee pee. He's he's so good in those moments because. He'll, like there's the mirror that's always to the left of me when I'm doing that, and so I'll be kind of like like leaning over, look, I'll I'll be looking at Diesel in that moment, and and he's just kind of looking at me in the mirror like this is weird, right? Like <laughs> like this is this is so weird right now. And sometimes he'll put his little back legs, like he'll latch them up here so it's easier for me to hold him. Oh my god! <laughs> but yeah, he. And he weighs, he weighs like 26 pounds. So, like, imagine, uh, you know, just imagine you're at the gym and you have the 30-pound medicine ball and you got to, like... I have a three-year-old, so I'm yeah. familiar. So yeah. you know that, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, I've tried to cook while holding her. It's very difficult. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's why you're you're shredded, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you're, definitely you're, not peeing. You're going to have to wait outside the room for yeah, that one. Yeah, you're doing all that kind of stuff. <laughs> that's yeah. Right. That's right. Oh my God! Uh, uh, I love that so much. Um, Am I the first comic that's brought a dog on the podcast? Yes, and the first that has shown me their pee stance. Okay, I yeah, believe. with the dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he will fall asleep like this right now. Like, like he'll he'll totally zonk out. Is it because of the topic? Should we talk about cats or something? <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is he loves cats. Um, dogs, he's like he's like oh that might be danger, but cats. He'll, like we're in New York. And um, it was yesterday, actually, and there was a bodega cat, and he was, like, sniffing, oh, yeah. playing with the cat. And so it's weird that my dog is a cat person. <laughs> <laughs> my dog is a cat person. He also had the most New York uh, experience yesterday. 
Um, there, there are these things called green streets. They, they, there are signs called green streets, and it's like a little park that they made on the street to make New York City beautiful. Sure. Well, they haven't been taken care of since COVID because they don't have staff to do normal stuff. And so um, the green streets are just like littered full of just crazy glass and whatever. But he won't go pee or poop um, unless it's the Charlotte airport uh, or <laughs> um, unless it's like dirt or grass. Like he just won't go on concrete. Like, he needs and, an audience. Or... He needs an audience. Uh, and but so uh, I had to take him over the green streets. Well, so he's walking around and like there's a bunch of leaves on the ground. And um, and I'm like, you know, I'm just I'm walking around with him and finally he finds a place that, you know, that he wants to go poop. And um, and he. Uh, he's doing he's he's doing his little poop walk. Oh, there you are you adjusted. He's doing his little poop walk, and he gets done. And I gotta take my little you know my little green doggy do good bag. And, yeah. Um, and I'm like, there's a bunch of leaves that came up with it, and then under I went ha, huh! and on he had he had basically taken a crap on a dead rat. Oh. It was the most New York thing that I've ever seen in the world. I thought you were going to say used condom for some reason. No, my dog but took rat. A, yeah, rat is so New York. My dog took a crap on a dead rat. That is so New York. That was the most new. And so, I don't know, like last night there were comics going, oh, you're going to Minnesota today. Like, like I bet you wish you were sticking around here longer. I'm like, no, my dog took a crap on a dead rat. Like, I can't, <laughs> I can't wait to get to like sweet Minnesota where I lived and I'm going to see all my old friends. Right. You know? Did you, I mean, obviously you can't tell us anything you heard if you did, but did you get to hear any of Chappelle's or did you, you, you... no, I heard it. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't say anything. Right. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it wouldn't matter if I did, but it's, I feel like it's like a code of comics that I don't want to like spoil his, his SNL set, but it's going to be a good one. Um, uh, it's it's definitely gonna be it's really funny um can you say whether you i mean i was reading these things about well there's some snl writers that are boycotting because of comments that dave Chappelle made were was that a topic of conversation at the cellar last night uh no um no it it like um oh i think he might want down hold on i'm gonna you're gonna go down um, you're not just a prop to me. <laughs> um, hey, buddy, good job, good job. You did, you did great on the podcast. Oh yeah. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, I don't. It, it's it's interesting. Like, you know, I I I get the idea that you know he's he's said a lot of things that you know there there are people in uh you know like in that community that they're they're they feel hurt by it he's like public enemy number one mm -hmm. you know um and i i just i get that um and so i i suppose that there would be people in any large company that would boycott stuff or you know they're like i guess right now it, it feels tribal right you know like um like like you're in that tribe and Dave is the enemy. He's in a he's in a different tribe, and so there's no way in today's era that you could kind of just go. Well, I'm still gonna go. I'm still gonna go to work, and I'm still gonna work. Like I'm still gonna go there, even though he's not like he's the enemy of my tribe. Like, yeah. which I don't know if that's the right way to do things necessarily, because if you think about it, you know, like the, the U.S. and Russia they were at odds through the whole cold war, but there still were summits where, you know, Reagan met with Gorbachev. Sure. Like, we like, still got the match between Rocky and Drago. I mean, they made it happen. Exactly. And by the way, I don't, I don't, I know Dave and, um, he's a loving person and he actually has a lot of trans people in his life. And, um, and he, he is somebody who's thoughtful enough to like really think about that community. And, um, and I just don't, I don't know, like a lot of the people that I know that say that his special was, you know, really hateful. I don't think they watched it. I think they read a blog that said that it was really hateful. Sure. And then they were like, well, it's hateful. Um, but I think if you really watch it and you listen to his words, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just, I think you really have to take it all in and, 
you have to have some critical thought behind it. Sure. Um, so I don't know. I, if, but if also if somebody wants to, if somebody wants to boycott their job for the week because Dave Chappelle's there, that's also their right. You know, like um, there's free speech, but then there's the consequences, right? Like, like I could I could walk out into the Acme Bar tonight and just talk all the smack that I want. That's free speech. But somebody can also punch me in the face, you know, so like free speech doesn't mean that there's no consequences to anything that you say. And, you know, Dave, like Dave knew that talking about that topic was going to ruffle feathers and that he was going to get blowback and pushback and all that kind of stuff. So like he made he made a decision. And so, you know, the fact that there's writers that won't go or whatever, um, I think that's just what today is. That's that's t- the year 2022, sure. and um, and it, it it's like tribalism in 2022. So I don't know. You know, I respect the right of anybody that wants to do that. Uh, la- I'm going to say that the last time you were here, you told the story about going to that after party with Chappelle. Oh, with Chappelle, yeah. yeah so uh, <clears throat> I want to encourage people to go back to that episode and listen to that one. I listened to it uh, earlier today, in fact, and uh, I'm just going to see. Uh, I'm going to say a name and see get your reaction. Uh, Maggie and the fire queefs. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. What's part of that story, dude? That was one of the most insane things that I've ever seen in my life. If I people bet. want to go back to that episode, yes. Um, the crux of that part of it was that I didn't know that there was a crazy burlesque show that was happening at Dave Chappelle's party that he invited me to, and this lady Maggie came out and she basically poured fire breathing stuff into her hoo ha. And then she blew fire out of it, like like took a one of those like fire breathing torches and went. <laughs> <laughs> and the craziest part was that I felt the heat from the fire, because I was sitting that close and I was like, my my first thought was like, is that sanitary? Right. That I felt the heat from the fire, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure the fire, um, I'm pretty sure that the fire uh, burned up anything that was bad in there. You know who would have stayed far away from that is Diesel. Oh, yeah, Diesel would have been like, oh, I don't trust it. Uh, I do not trust it. But, yeah, it's it's weird, you know. Um, I, like, it, it's interesting because, like, I do feel like I'm in, I, and I don't know how to say this, and I don't I don't even think that the, that the trans community would agree with me on this, but, like, I feel like I'm, I am a trans ally. I have a, I have a trans family member. Um, I, like, I, I like if you're in that community, I love you. I support you. Um, I like, I've gotten so much better at using pronouns and, you know, I've realized I'm an idiot and, and I've, you know, like I've had so much growth. You want to get a lot of growth with pronouns? Have teenage daughters. Oh yeah. Know all about that. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so like, I, I, like I love that community and I love my family member. Um, but at the same time, like Dave Chappelle is like one of my idols and, and he's a, he's a friend and he's a, a really sweet person to me and he's in my tribe. And so like, I guess part, this is like the, uh, this is like the part of being an adult that is the hardest that sometimes there are two things that can be true at the same time that are in conflict with one another. Absolutely. Um, I love the trans community. I also love Dave. And I like I could probably I guess I could be canceled for just saying that idea. But, um, you know, I think it's the right thing to say. Like, I think I don't think that it's ever bad to say that you love people, no, <laughs> you know, shouldn't um, be. yeah, I you know, so I don't know. But yeah, that so that's the conflict of it. Is, and like there have been a couple of times where, you know, like I've been around Dave, like there's a photographer that snaps a photo. I'm like. I think it's so cool. I want to put it on my social media. I don't, you know, because I don't want to, like, I don't want to upset interesting people yeah. that I love, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting time. But hmm. I don't know what that that le- that thing that I just said is the lesson that I hope a lot of people take away from this time period. That like, you can, you can have somebody from another tribe, or that you just cr- you you are polar opposite in your ideals from them and you can still treat them like a human and 
and go like, well, that exists. Yeah. You know, um, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I was lucky enough to, I rode next to her on a plane that, oh, yes. and I got to talk to her and, you know, she was best friends with Justice Scalia that ideologically they were like Hamilton and Jefferson. They, oh, yeah. they, and they went on vacations, family vacations together. And, you know, so like if those two, I mean, and they're both geniuses that like really, they were that like, they understood the the minutia of everything in the world and they really knew the engine that makes the world go around and they still could be friends. Like if that's true, I feel like, uh, you know, I can love my trans friends and Dave Chappelle. I don't know. <laughs> Was that diesel scratching Diesel's at the trying door? to get it. Yeah. Uh -oh. Diesel's trying to, is it bathroom time? No, he's just trying to get out in the restaurant because he knows that there's probably some food on the floor <laughs> somewhere. I don't know. Oh, I love it. Uh, let's just do a few more minutes here, Pete. Um, uh, did you bring merch with this time? I always like to add. I know I've heard every soul show is sold out already, first of all. Yeah, which is great. I, th that's uh, thanks to the clips online, you know. Um, uh, it's funny, like, you know, you used to want to get on TV shows and now – you really got to get that algorithm going with, you know, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. And it's really because of Instagram and TikTok that the shows are sold out. Um, I, I I just read an article. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt no. you. I just bought this topic. Just it's brand new. It was in Vulture, maybe. Yeah. Uh, like in it. <clears throat> it's a whole big thing about the people's different views on like the crowd work clips and oh, all yeah. that stuff and like are you are these are there so many that then so many comedians think that that's just the thing to do and that a lot of them suck yeah or is it or is it like so good uh that it's really helping people's careers like Nimish Patel who is selling out theaters now I just read he sold out of theater theaters in, yeah in which, November which Nimish is a good friend of mine I'm so proud of him uh yeah, but I think it here's what I think it's done. Um, all right. I want to go two places with this. Uh, number one, uh, the crowd work clips, whether or not it's good that there's so much crowd work clips. First of all, it's necessary. Um, because the algorithm right now rewards you if you do a clip a day. Right. So well, I was looking through yours. I saw it. Yeah. It was day by day. Day by, every day, single day, day I do yeah. I do a clip. Uh, um, I was up early editing this morning. I did my clip. Um, I already have my clip edited for tomorrow and the next day. Oh, good job. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, so, like, if you're complaining that comedians are posting crowd work clips, you got to look at the math of it. It's time math, right? So it's 365 days a year. Let's say uh, some clips are 30 seconds, some clips are three minutes. So you, you boil that down to somewhere in the middle. Most clips are gonna be a minute or just over a minute. 365 days times a minute, that's six hours. Six hours of material. Comedians used to spend 10 years just coming up with their first hour yeah, of amazing. material. And you know, really great comedians like Carlin would do a special every year. Mm -hmm. And even, even then people were like, I think he's doing it too soon. So now you got guys like, like me who are, um, who are putting out a clip a day. So I'm doing, I'm doing six hours of stuff that I'm putting online. And then in addition to that, I'm getting ready to do another special coming up sometime in the next year or eight months and I've been writing material for that, making it awesome, uh, banking it, not putting any of it online. Yeah. So like my best stuff, I'm not putting on those clips, but the clips still have to be uh, witty enough and spectacular enough that they that people want to share them. And so it's a it's a bit of a conundrum in that like I like this weekend I'm gonna do a lot of crowd work like um, and I, I would say that it'll probably be like. 80 20 80 material 20 percent crowd work but there'll be times in the show where i'll just like open it up and and do the crowd work and um from that i'll harvest you know probably about an hour total of crowd work from the whole weekend so this article mentioned that like i think a friend of yours jessica kirsten oh yeah yeah is is added a q and a section to her sets yeah i do flat out get get that crowd work the internet yeah, I um, I do that sometimes. 
a friend of mine asked me about that and said, like, do you do that? And I'm like, I only do that if I if I've noticed that, like, over the course of a couple shows, I haven't done any crowd work. And then I'll okay. be like, all right, okay. do you guys have any questions? Do you? And I know Mark Norman does that as well. He he'll be like, all right, uh, you I know, I just saw him and he did yell yeah. yell stuff out. <laughs> Comedy, I love him. <laughs> um, I talk like a pickle salesman. <laughs> uh, I, I love I love Mark so much. Ah, ah, hey, hey. Uh, ah. silence. <laughs> Don't love it. Ah, I love him. I I love him so much. I won't look you dread in the eye. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Uh. <laughs> um, he uh, yeah, he does that, but. So I like I will definitely do that. Um, uh, but then I like recently and I never know when it's going to happen, but there will be shows where I wind up doing the whole show ends up being crowd work. And lately that's a product of me getting better at crowd work. And then also um, sometimes crowds come out because they see the clips and they're like, we want crowd work. And so they'll kind of chime yeah, in, sure. but they don't they don't heckle in a way that's destructive, like they'll, they'll give you something, you know, like, uh, you know, like, Oh, so how are you guys doing? Ah, oh, my daughter's a ballerina and she broke her leg. And like, that's enough to like, there's a lot of meat there, sure. you know? Um, and so you can, you can, you can find an improv game to play with that, yeah. you know, somewhere. Um, so yeah, it's, it is a lot of crowd work, but like I, I sift, I go through every single second of every every single show and i you know because i edit all my own stuff uh because i'm good at it and i'm also frugal i don't want to pay somebody else to do it <laughs> but while i'm going through all that stuff i actually find all these little little things that i said that i'm like oh that can branch out into a bit and i have a couple bits that are now in my my hour special hour that they wouldn't have happened if it would have wouldn't have been from the crowd work or something that i set off yeah, yeah. you know off topic and so it it's interesting that I think that all this crowd work is actually making comedy better. And then also there's there's a ton of stuff that maybe I'm just talking about and I'm working on it. Um, it might not be a bit that winds up in the in the hour special. But now people are getting to see basically like the deleted footage that you would have stuff that you were working on that might not make it into the special a lot of times that would have gone nowhere and now it goes into those clips and it was, it's good enough to be a clip. Um, but it's not necessarily something that would go into a special. Yeah. So I think this is great for comedy. It's great for comedians. We're, we have to create so much more than we used to. Also, um, it's hard to have writer's block when nothing is precious. You know, you're like, you're just, you're just throwing it out there. Yeah. And, and so, you can't get stuck and and you have to put a ton of material online but um the the reason why all this is good is because it it there used to be gatekeepers the the gatekeepers at the network they would go okay you, you like you you and you we're going to make you a star and we've all seen people that are stars in comedy that you're like I don't like that person and i think a lot of times America looked at, the, at, the, at that person and goes, I don't like you. I don't know why you're being shoved down my throat. And now it's more of a meritocracy. It's like back to being a meritocracy where if somebody's funny, they will shine. Like like the cream will rise to the top because people will see a clip and they'll share it. And, and, they'll, and so um, it also takes away people's excuses. You know, for, for a couple of years, there were a lot of comics that were belly aching like, like, oh, I'm not getting a chance and, you know, so-and-so at this network hates me and that's why I'm not doing well. Well, now you're, you're out of excuses. Sure. You've, got, you've got to produce content. you got to put it out there and you can be successful. And um, I'm, just, I'm just doing the work and I'm doing it within the current system. And at some point, this system's going to change and there's going to be another thing that we're doing. And we're going to look back and go, man, I miss that crowd work or I miss whatever that era was. So you, uh, I know you have a TikTok account. You have tons of followers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you, this is the final thing I'm going to ask you this week, oh. this year. What do you, because I just started, I have a confession, I started using TikTok. I've posted yeah. a few things. I was against it for a long time. It is really fun to look at. My question is to you, what is your favorite thing to, uh, to take in from TikTok? What keeps oh. your attention besides girls with like big boobs? Oh, yeah. My algorithm on TikTok what is your algorithm? Yeah. Is or like for for the stuff that I view, 
TikTok knows that I generally don't look at a lot of like dancing babes on there. Um, I think when I first got on there, I was like, ah, dancing babes, uh, jiggling babes, you know? Um, but now I'm like, I, I don't know. You like, you've seen so many that you're like, all right, that dance is stupid. I don't want like TikTok knows that I'm not interested in that. Here's what TikTok knows that I'm into. Um, like a video where a guy is resurfacing a driveway and it's a time lapse. Oh my God. I will watch the whole three minutes. Yeah. I'm fascinated. Yeah. There there's these TikToks where, where a guy will take apart a watch. It'll be like an old Rolex. That's like crusty and rusty or it's broken and he'll, it's like 4k and he'll be dusting every single part he'll be putting it in in liquid and purifying it and then putting little drops of oil you would on have it never known how fascinated you are that i would have never known never. that i love that yeah, i never. watched uh this guy took this old honda uh, motorcycle and it was all rusted it must have just been in a, like in a junkyard he took the whole thing took it all apart pounded the dents out of it uh, like, uh, I don't know what you de-rust something with, but every single part de-rusted them, yeah, yeah. scrubbed them, oiled them, uh, you know, painted them, polished them in three minutes. It was time-lapse and I got to see this. And then this guy drives off on the motorcycle yeah. and it's beautiful. And you're looking for more. Yeah, I, I was it. like, oh God, I loved that. <laughs> wow. So yeah, I don't, and maybe that's a function of being 45 years old, but, um, and by the way, uh, jiggling ladies, you know, that's always something that my brain is going to go, oh, that's cool. You know, um, there's never a, like like a time where my brain's not like that's that's not something. Right. But there's something about being a 45 year old guy <laughs> where I'm like, oh, I will I will watch the the rusty motorcycle becoming a new mo motorcycle way faster than the jiggling ladies yeah the uh the frustrating thing about those types of videos that i've noticed is that if they don't if whatever they're working on isn't completed in that video oh i'm gonna fucking wring your neck yeah you just waste my time don't make me search for the next and then if it's more popular to another one yeah then, like, it's not like in chronological oh so find part two well that's oh. seven spots down on your page fine part tell you find part two I will never go and find part two. <laughs> and but that is because I have tried to go find part two before and I got so pissed yeah. that I had to go find part two. And then if part three, they're like, wait for part three or part two, they're like, wait for part three. I'm furious. I'm like, now I got to watch. Like, I went from loving this for three minutes to hating. If it auto played part two, I would be so into right. it. Or if there was even a, a button on it that was like, tap this for part two, right. and it's just easy, and I don't got to go, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that that's what I love. I mean, I also, I'm also a, a, a huge, um, um, I don't know what, like, I'm a huge connoisseur of stand-up clips as well. I watch a lot of them on a weekly basis. There goes Diesel. He's He's backstage now. <laughs> Um, he's with the groupies, um, <laughs> but I watch a lot of stand-up clips, and part of it's because it's changed. It changes all the time, and like you can see what's hitting and what's not. So like when I'm watching stand-up clips, it's because they're my friends and I'm fans of them. But I'm also kind of seeing what's working, and that doesn't really change what I do during a show. Like I'm not going, oh, this is working. I'm gonna do this type of crowd work. Sure. Um, but what I am seeing is when I'm going through all my content and I'm editing, uh, like a clip that you used to be able to just throw out nothing and it would get hits because it's like, oh, this guy's being funny on the spot. That used to be amazing. Now it's like, it has to be really interesting and there has to be a great punchline at the end of it. Um, otherwise it's nothing. And so why am I going to spend time editing and, um, you know, captioning and color correcting a clip, you know, to make it look all 4K if it's just going to be nothing. Yeah. And so I'm watching other comics and seeing, you know, seeing what they're doing has really just upped my my editing selections. And now you're it's almost like working as a journalist where you're like I'm in my own monday morning meeting going all right what's the story 
what, oh, yeah. what, are, what are the beats? What are we covering this week? And I'll actually take, I'll, I'll do all my editing for the week. I'll, I cut them up into clips and then I make a timeline of just those clips. And then I go through them and then I make another timeline where I like put them in order. And I'm like, all right, this is going to be Monday. This is going to be Tuesday. Wow. This is going to be Wednesday. Um, Saturdays are usually big days for views, especially if you can post early. Um, sure. uh, cause it's the weekend and yeah. a, a lot of people have more time. So Saturday, Sunday, I'll be like, Oh, this was, this is a good one. I got to save this for Saturday, Sunday. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot, it, it's, it, it's a ton. And so I'm looking at other people going, what are they, what are they doing? How are they doing it? What are they hashtagging? Um, I'm also looking at like, when did they post, you know, when uh, this video has a ton of views, when. When did they post? Was it in the morning? Was it in the evening? Uh, you know, what is it? Also, you know, we used to have to censor ourselves content wise because the network would be like, you can't say that, right. you know, because the FCC and um, cable companies kind of just agreed to not be vulgar um, with like a handshake deal. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, like TikTok, you can't be vulgar on there. Like, like if you're vulgar, your video, you like your account will get frozen and, um, and like your video will get no views and then you'll just kind of, you'll be sort of like blacklisted for yeah, shadow band. Sh yeah. Things. Shadow band yeah. for a week or two. And I, by the way, I've seen so many comics, they get on their stories and they're like, I'm shadow band. Will you help me? If you get, I've, I've had a couple times where I, I put a clip out and I don't even know if what I said was bad, but the algorithm saw a series of words together. Um, like, I remember I, I was like, I was like, oh, my God, like, if I see that, I'm going to die. I'm going to die so hard if I see that. But I think it was like it was like about cheese curds with ranch. But all the algorithm saw was I'm going to die. I'm going to die so hard. I'm going to die right now. And then they were like banned. Like and, and so my view, my videos didn't get viewed for a week. And then they they must have gone through and reviewed that video and they must have gone, oh my God, he's talking about cheese curds. Like, geez, wow, okay. I posted about the podcast uh, Kill Tony somewhere. Yeah. And they sent me a thing about suicide. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a- like, I'm not killing myself. It's a big thing and it, it's it's because they, it's not people that are reviewing them necessarily. It's it's the, all they auto caption all this stuff now and then they sift through all those words and there's just certain phrases that if you say it and so but the the takeaway from that is um like you got to bleep stuff out and you have to bleep it out to the point where the auto captions can't see it i saw that yeah. and then you also have to so i just like cut that out and i've also gotten more finessed with that like to where they really can't understand what you did and then you can kind of put something up on the screen that looks like it but it's spelled wrong and yeah. people get the gist of oh, it yeah. or you know it, it's like a fill in the blank thing and but people have they've understood what that is but i don't love that because i don't do really dirty comedy and if i have to do that to my stuff it's it's like wow this is really sensitive true yeah. and I get that there's a lot of there's a lot of young people on this platform. There's a lot of people that and I'm not being insulting, but you know they're they're 15 years old or you know and their brain hasn't formed to the point, and so they're impressionable or whatever. So I get that you got to do that, but um, but I I just I like platforms more where where you can just kind of say anything and they don't they don't censor you so much. But then you run into the problem of what everybody's arguing about with Twitter right now, where if if you can say anything, uh, oh, my God, the stuff that people say when they can say anything, right. you know. Right, right. So I, I get the I get the other side of it. But, Pete, um, we got to put a bow on this thing, my friend. All right. <clears throat> we're going to upset. Uh, we're going to upset the algorithm of how long the podcast is. Gonna, I don't know if that's a thing, but we're going to upset the algorithm. <laughs> that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Um, Oh gosh, I got I'm going to have dinner with Lewis and I I'm still all scuzzy. See? I have, I have uh I still have sweat from last night. We on both got to go clean up. I'm coming to the show tonight. Oh, you're coming to the show tonight. Yeah, oh, so great. I got to drive home and pick up my wife and come back. All right. Well, then I'm really going to try. I'm really going <laughs> to I'm if you're coming, I'm going to do a good job. Thank you. Yeah, I I always do a good job. You're damn right you do. That's why I come every time. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Oh, uh, thank you for doing this as always. I mean, I, clearly we could go on and on and on and on. And oh, yeah. Fun. Um 
let's do it again a year from now or sooner. Let's Please. do it. Absolutely. Right. Dude, I miss you. It's so good to see you. Yeah. Thanks, Pete. Curse right. of Pete Lee. <laughs> Pete Lee. Dearest. Pete Lee. Oh, Pete. Oh, my God. Honestly, there's so much.